Welcome to Business Blurb U and the Dropouts Podcast. My name is Brendan Cox, and I'm here with my co-host, Devin Carley. Yo, what's up, everyone? How are you guys doing? Today, we have two special guests, X and Ivy. They're the creators of Party Shirt. What's up, boys? How are you guys doing? Yo, what's good, boys? How you doing, legends? First off, you guys are killing it. Like, every single freaking TikTok video on the For You page has your name tagged 300 times in the comments. So, <laughs> no, props it's, to you guys. It's crazy. Yeah, and so. that's sort of one of the, the coolest unexpected things from the whole series is oh. when we initially started it, we encouraged people to tag us just because we obviously can't find you know, that many videos, like it's, um, and then it's actually just, now it's just any video. My mum literally just sent me one just before. <laughs> yeah, it was just a random video. I was like, welcome to Factual Cat. But yeah, it's crazy. No, it is for sure. And I think that's, Devin and I were just talking and that's the cool part. Like you guys are one getting like free promo because you're at yes. in every single comment section. Yes. Also, you guys are getting like fed video ideas, which is yeah, a hundred. No, we're very fortunate that we have a there's a community that supports us and, and that helps us with our job. You know, it's not just us in a room trying to find videos all day. We're like yeah, that no. people people tag us. 100%. Yeah, so you guys are a duo. Like, how did you first meet each other? Like, that's the question that a lot of people are wondering. Yeah, I mean, we'll add on bits and pieces, but we actually met. Um, my roommate at USC, my freshman year roommate, was childhood best friends with Ivy. And so when I was interested in DJing, he said, hey, you should meet my you know, buddy Ivy. He's a really good DJ. He's actually in music production school. Um, and then we met that summer of 2016 and just clicked right away. And we're like, hey, let's do this. Sweet. Was, was that Justin that brought you guys together? No, it was actually another kid called John. Um, yeah. I met Justin after I met Ivy. That's, that's crazy. <laughs> so you guys, you started with music, and now you kind of like switch lanes, and you're focusing more on like the the factor cap, all the TikTok stuff. Like, how did you decide to make that uh, switch from like creating music to more of like the content creation? Well, I mean, we kind of like just had to be real with ourselves for a second. We we're like, okay, like this TikTok thing's growing at a rate that like we can't even comprehend right now. So it'd be foolish for us to like put too many, too much on our plate and like tie ourselves out. So we're like, all right, let's take a step back from music for a little bit. Let's really hone in on this TikTok stuff, get to like the level where we can like go in again and really like do whatever we want to have a platform to like be able to release to and just express ourselves to. Exactly. And it wasn't that crazy of a jump in a way because we'd always done both, you know, the right. music had just sort of blown up a little bit. So people weren't paying attention to the content. And now that the content's blown up, people aren't really paying attention to the music. But it's like, I, don't, I honestly don't feel like we're doing that much different. You know, obviously, there's less time on the studio right now, but we're going to get back to it. But we've all we've all like, if you go back to our Instagram, we've been making these funny little videos since like, forever, literally that's crazy what's like what's the most viral video you, you guys have ever had couldn't tell you that we've got about four in the 30 million range i think i mean i think it, it could be the pregnancy test one it could be the this pancake, pancake yeah pancake it might be the one i'd have to check but we i know we've got a, I, I think the pancake might be in the 40 mil well, when did you guys start posting on tiktok were you always on the platform or like no so we had We'd signed up, had an account, and we actually couldn't even get the party shirt username to begin with. Like, we signed up um, around, just after right. we graduated from USC. It was, yeah, May 2019-ish. Mm-hmm. Well, because when we started blowing up, it was like 2020. But we, ha- we actually had a TikTok account for a year, and we were just using it sort of just like, just for fun. You know, people send you TikToks. And I saw that David Dobry got like 50 million views in one day on it. I was like, oh shit, we should try this. And then we uploaded a video of Ivy chugging ranch <laughs> and sadly it didn't perform like we'd hoped. So we just sort of didn't make any videos for a year. And then, you know, quarantine happened, everyone's getting on it. And we were like, how can we promote our music? And so TikTok really helped us get our song out there. And then from that, we just started posting some funny videos. It was honestly sort of like a reaction channel. Mm-hmm. And um and then yeah and then Factor Cap came around and then bang. How did you it. how did you guys even think of the Factor Cap series? Just sort of came to us. It was you know we'd be, always been fans of the Mistbuster series. There was a um 
there was a guy called Con Sully who was doing something somewhat similar, but he was looking at it more from like a PI standpoint. Like he'd be like, look at it frame by frame and see if the video is edited and stuff. So we're just like, hey, let's just like test it. We're interested in finding it ourselves, so we may as well film it. Gotcha. Does party shirt like have a meaning or do you just like like the two words so you just put them together yeah i mean it was sort of like party shirt it's just like you know those sort of hawaiian type shirts joints well we we used to wear these hawaiian shirts and a friend would always say oh you guys have your party shirts on today so when we're thinking of a dj name it just sort of just sounded like a fun fun without being like cringy and it was just a cool name and now it's taken a whole different (laughs) it's a different beast now we're trying to tame it (laughs) <laughs> yeah, sure i saw that video where you were like uh you guys like trademarked party shirt or the word party or something. that was funny yeah that's so good humor. we we still do have that in the works okay yeah. that goes out to anyone listening right now if you're having a party and you're not inviting us you will be hearing from our lawyers so just keep that in yeah. mind we, we stuff reopen and keep that the fuck in mind yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty fun how did you you said you were doing content creation like way before this like factor cap stuff. How did you guys both get started on social media in general? Like besides TikTok? Well, I mean, X and I had been making videos. X especially was really into like vlogging and he was like one of the most subscribed YouTubers back in like early, early days of YouTube. Like oh nine before Devin was even born. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the milkman had not touched the glass. <laughs> Um, but yeah, and then I had just been making funny, stupid videos on, with my friends and shit. And then, like, we came together and we were like, all right, like, this DJing thing, we were really inspired by Fisher and he was kind of just a comedic guy. So we were like, how about we, like, make our thing, like, we do the DJing and then we do little, like, sketch comedy things too. Yeah. So we had our buddy Pedro and we write these little skits and just do them. Our first one, Firebot, too. I remember that one. That was, like, yeah. the first. One we really kind of went into. No, exactly. That was, yeah, Pedro Camargo, because he's going to freaking, he wants me to say his name. Pedro Camargo. <laughs> and, uh, he, he's one of our best friends, and he's really helped us um, from the start. And we are doing these, you know, sort of, they were like almost SNL skits, and I'm not humble about them. They're, fuck, they're all amazing. They're all hilarious. If you haven't seen them, I think it's some of our best work. This week, Because they're yeah. really, really funny. Very thought out. So you were one of the most subscribed YouTube channels, like, before... Like, yeah, in in, in Australia and in two thousand and nine, so I only had ten thousand subscribers, or like maybe twelve thousand, but that placed me the tenth most subscribed in Australia. Because oh. a way different time, there wasn't one channel with a million subs yet. Then shortly after Fred, he he became the first. That's oh, Fred! Crazy. I remember Fred. That's crazy to think that. Like I re- I remember those days when it was like if you got a hundred K plaque, that was like crazy. But now I feel like those are like. It's more like everybody's going for the million plaques. Like, Dude, I remember the days before the plaques, so it's all crazy. Yeah, like, <laughs> to me, like, plaques is new YouTube. Like, that's when I was, like, off it for a while. Because it was just, like, after the first VidCon, you know, that was sort of cool. And then it just sort of, I mean, I love that it's commercialized, but it just sort of just got weird for a little bit. So I remember you telling me you earned, or you uh, ran the Instagram account EarthPix. Was that actually yes. you? Yes, yeah, yeah, me, I started that with my buddy Kyle um, back in Australia in, I can't even remember when we started the account, uh, might have been around like 2013, yeah, I'd say like 2013, 2012. Are you and still, then sort of, go ahead, sorry, my bad. No, I'm not involved anymore. And then that's actually why I moved out to LA, it's why Kyle moved from Hawaii to LA, was because then we created a company around it and met a couple other guys and then, yeah. Did you sell it, or, or how did that work out? I uh, just don't even want to talk about it. I can't really. I want to talk about it, but I can't because I signed some, like, when I parted ways with the company, I just signed some stuff where I'm like, it's it's not even. We'll come out in a documentary <laughs> one day. <laughs> <laughs> so good. So but, yeah, it didn't work out like I had hoped. Let's just say that. Gotcha. So what are some of, like, you guys are crushing it on TikTok now. You're doing the music thing. You said you're, you're getting back into that. Like, what are your goals for the future? Like, in five years, where do you guys see yourself? Definitely being one of the biggest YouTubers on YouTube. Um, I mean, we're. I mean, me and X are just crazy, you know, competitive in, term, in terms of, like, we want to be, like, the best, you know? So it's, like, we want to be taking names and really get like top five TikTok, be one of the biggest YouTubers and really just being able to do whatever the hell we want to do in terms of just like 
content creation, making clothes, making music, all that good stuff. Love that. I like you guys are going crazy viral. What would you say to like up and coming influencers? Like any tips? Like them just starting? Like what would you say to them? Just, you know, just just it's just obviously getting started is a tough part. You know, it's one of the biggest things you got to wrestle with is everything sort of cringy until it gets views. You know, mm-hmm. so like no one wants to be cringy. Like and their friends see him and it's like you know eight views and like you know and you put your heart and soul into it like. Right. So you got to get past that, and then it's all about volume too. You know, people do like three videos a week and, and be like, "What's going on?" You need to be doing like seven a day, you know. And I know it's a lot to ask, but you got to ask that of yourself. And you know, if you really want to pursue this seriously, consistency yeah. kills. How, yeah, does, a- how does that? Like, I, I noticed that you guys are posting like what ten videos average a day, maybe maybe a little less. But like, how do, how do you guys go about that? That's a lot. Okay, I mean, yeah, we it do. is a lot. We're working, <laughs> yeah. we're, we're working all day, every day. There's no real life hack to it, honestly. Yeah. It's just a lot, a lot of work. Um, but it's worth it, and we're blessed to be able to do it. But we sort of, yeah, it's just a lot of work. <laughs> do you guys have like a team behind you, or is it just you two? It's just us two right now. We've got some people sort of helping, and we got we're with UTA and whatnot. But right now, for the most part, it's just Ivy and me. Does it take a while to film the factor cap videos or is it like that's you- not as long as you that's no, not particularly. I mean, sometimes the experiments drag on, but yeah. The hardest part is just getting all the supplies ready for the videos because mm-hmm. half the time we have to run and circuit through friggin' Home Depot, yeah. Ralph's and Target. Yeah. So that takes up most of our day. And then like me and X have really just gotten killer at like shooting the videos where we can pretty much do it all in one take. And then just depending on the experiment, how long that part takes. Yeah. How do you, like, what do you guys compare yourself to? Is there like a, is there like a group or like, like obviously you got like Nelk and you got, you like, you said you want to be top 10. Like who, who are you kind of coming after? Like what, uh, what group do you compare yourself to? Or the thing is, it's like, I was trying to think of that yesterday. Yeah. Like, and there's just no, our content. So, you know, it's all similar in it. Like, I mean, factual caps is own little thing, but in terms of the vlog, you know, um, it's like, I don't even know. It's like a bit of Nelk. It's a bit of Dobrik. It's a bit of like this. It's a bit of that. Like it's very, the vlog's very unique. I think where it's like, it doesn't feel like Dobrik and Alex Warren, you know, how that's so similar. Like it's, I don't know. I, I want to, I wish there was somewhere we could like look up to and be like, okay, we're going to beat them. They make super similar videos, but it's, I don't know. I think it's really unique. Right. And then there's people going to be like, you got, you're just driving around with your friends getting drunk in yeah. LA. Like, what is your concept? <laughs> no, but it's deeper than that. You know, there's like, it's, I think that tells a story. That's interesting. You guys remind me of Nelk because like they have a brand and it's like two people running it. It's like party shirt. You got you two. So yeah. It, it's, it's probably Nelk, but more family friendly. I'd yeah. Say. Yeah. Do you think it's more beneficial? Like I know a lot of people that do business with their friends or family, like they run into a lot of problems. Do you think like you guys, it's it's more beneficial working together than solo. Oh, 110 percent. You know, a hundred. No, it's every project I've done, I've had a partner, and I've, I'm I'm pretty good at selecting them these days. Um, and even from the start, like Kyle, my first business partner, really good. Evan, and now Ivy. Um, so I've I've been lucky, and I mean, there's so many reasons why. Number one, just the emotional yeah. dealing with the emotions of it, sharing that with someone. I can't imagine doing this alone. Like, it's just tough, you know, because like it's not like we're, we're we're on all the time, you know. Some of sometimes we slack a little, and we just you need that other person to kind of like be yeah. like, all right, should we like get to this or like yeah, some shit facts. like that, you know? It's like a true like yin and yang like yeah. partnership. And De- and Devin, I'm interested. Like, how is it? Because you're sort of alone because i've only done stuff with people so you you know you're a solo influencer in a, in a lot of ways you know you got backs helping you with the editing but obviously you know you don't have another like influencer with you you're living with welling who <laughs> spot, he's an up and coming dj mm-hmm. um but it's like how do you when, when you have these influencer problems and questions and i don't know we're dealing with emotions how do you how do you deal with that yeah it's definitely a lot more challenging like i kind of wish i have like a buddy like next to me that's like really similar and be like okay we're doing this today but i don't yeah. um you just, i don't know like you just gotta just go for it i mean i i talk to max but that's why i'm trying to get my brother out here um, yeah i get it how yeah it's just working with more people is just way more beneficial no always yeah. you know i'm back to working with friends like what you know a lot of our friendships are actually have been business first in a way and then friendship like we you know max we were friends with before but 
you know, after starting working with him, we've obviously become a lot more close and just like, I don't know, everything. You want to work with your friends ideally, but then you got to be prepared to fire your friends, you know? Yeah. And that's why I, you know, don't wouldn't really love hiring family. It'd be more mm-hmm. like, unless it's like immediate family, like, mm-hmm. you know, um, but it's just tough, you know, it's a, it's a balance, you know, there's a lot of pros and cons to it. No, yeah, hundred percent. That's why, like, uh, I learned like a lot from you guys just like hanging around, like, before I was just like so long, I was like, damn, this is like tough. Like yeah. just like a kid just moved to LA and just trying to like make it is like oh. hard. And then like while I was hanging with you guys, like I picked up a lot of smaller stuff. I'm just like learning along the way. No, I we Which, appreciate that because we love you like a son. Yeah, seriously. Really you are a son. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. yeah that- Every, everyone that meets you just loves you instantly because like they wouldn't you're just so nice and genuine and sweet, you know? So it's hard not to love you. No, I appreciate that. Like I look up to you guys like like an older brother basically. Yeah, um, good, yeah. Good. We both oh, have yeah. like similar yeah. mindsets, and like I do yeah. appreciate the hustle. No, and then I think what would surprise a lot of people about you is how business savvy you are. Yeah. You know, Definitely. yeah. Like when I was looking at all them POVs over the summer, like, <laughs> I wouldn't have been like this guy is like a business sicko. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, yet. Yeah, man, you still need to teach us how to cry. Yeah, <laughs> that's <laughs> what I'm so, saying. <laughs> hey, I, we asked Devin, "How do you cry?" Just like. Well, think of the most traumatic thing that's ever happened to you. I'm like, uh, I don't know if I want to do that. <laughs> it's all the milk another way. How going back to like the business thing? How are you guys monetizing party shirt? Like, is it just creator? We're in, the, fund? we're in the TikTok creator fund, which is you know surprisingly one of our biggest revenue sources right now because most people would be like the creator fund doesn't pay. But we've just been very cautious of the brands we work with, you know, saying no to deals that don't make sense, saying no to deals that don't feel like we're getting our fair share. Yeah. Um, we try the, the deals we take to, we try to genuinely like make them into a factor cap that is like kind of like seamless in a way. Like we just did a shower head one. That one got like 15 mil. Yeah, that one did really and well. That one was just like turning testing water pressure you know, you know? so we really try to shoot for something and it that was already test. a viral video too. like it was a video people had tagged us in so it just really made sense you know definitely um i think so it's all of i think that's smart too because a lot of the companies these days that are like early on tiktok don't get that like if you're not blending the content in and it's just like a straight up promo it's just gonna flop like yeah it's just, it's just an ad read yeah it's not gonna do well especially yeah like you said because tiktok you know our videos can like not do that well if they don't hit, you know, like it's everyone's like subject to the for you page and the following, you know, like people follow like thousands of pages. Like you still need to, your content needs to hit even to be shown to your following. Oh yeah. hundred percent. I feel like a lot of brands like lack on that. They're just like clueless and it's very frustrating mm-hmm. to work with those types of brands. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, Cause at the end of the day, like if you're doing something like that, and they expect this shit, then it's like, okay, well, I need whatever you want to be as close to like my original content, you know? No, th- and then and then there's the brands that are like, we want we want to give you some creative freedom, and then they're kind of all over you with like, this is here's your script, and I'm like, that's not creative freedom. <laughs> so like, I, don't, yeah. I get it, and that's though, cause, what, yeah, because it's it's a risk. Like you, TikTok's hard because these brands are spending like. Uh, a decent amount of money and for all they know it could get like 5,000 views and like that's just a huge loss so I kind of get both sides of it but it's just kind of a learning experience for sure yeah yeah. you figure out what works and what doesn't so do you guys stay at a drama for the most part are you ever on tiktok room or any of that no thank god we want to stay the fuck away from any of that stuff we're just two guys in an apartment testing tiktok (laughs) friends we (laughs) we come in peace no no drama leave that to Devin, right no, leave nah. that to Devin, dude. Yeah, yeah, they don't the milk, man. <laughs> <laughs> nah, drama is somehow one of LA's most controversial figures. <laughs> <laughs> drama is no good. It's so stressful. It's terrible. Uh, I could only yeah. imagine. No, yeah, it follows Devin around like a bad smell for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> He's not. There, there's people at work, but he does. Everyone's. Nah, I know. Yeah, I'm, like, I'm teasing him. He doesn't. It's, it's just small things here and there. It's just so funny because Devin, you'd think we would get in drama before Devin. You know, like, <laughs> right, when you yeah. meet Devin, you're just like, there's no way these kids get it, like, ever. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and every day he's like, boys, like, this went up or that happened. I'm just like, dude, how's this even happen? <laughs> like, Chanti even just grilling you out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> so, speaking of, like, this is kind of off topic, but like, 
besides Party Shirt, are you two like growing up personal brands separately, like each of you, or is it are you kind of just sticking no, with the it's Party just, Shirt? Just Party yeah. Shirt. We got our personal Instagrams, and that's just yeah. to talk to our like family and friend, <laughs> like everything else. We don't have any other personal socials, any like anything else like that. That's pretty interesting. I kind of see, like Devin was saying, I kind of see Party Shirt like going into like a milk thing where you you almost like bring on like I don't know. I kind of see it as like. Party shirt just sounds like a kind of a big group of like people that are just like no, it's a big brand. Yeah, we it's, can it's definitely scale it to like yeah. a creative like yeah. agency. I feel like one yeah. day, you know. No, Devin offered us. He said uh, we can sign him a part of the party shirt collective, <laughs> and he'll give us ninety percent of his earnings. So, <laughs> trying to get it up to ninety five, and then we'll then we're talking. All right, yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> That should that would actually be a hilarious documentary. Like we make Devin into a party boy and like <laughs> document the journey from Dan, like like Dan a life of a party shirt. Yeah, no, but no, it's about you and we're like corrupting you over the course of like eighteen <laughs> months, and then you just become like a full on douchebag that we can't even tame, <laughs> and you like move to the Jersey Shore. He overtakes party shirt and yeah. like kicks us out. Like yeah, exactly. Right. Like you change the passwords and like somehow get the trademark. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Definitely do that in the next year. I'm looking forward to it. I'm ready to retire. <laughs> Is there anybody like you guys are like dying to collab with, or like, I, do you guys collab that often with people, or is it mostly just? We don't. COVID sort of made it a little bit tough. Obviously, stuff's starting to open up. I don't know if you boys saw that LA's opening indoor dining one day. Yeah, that's cool. So oh, the, indoor, yeah. Oh wow, twenty five percent capacity. But yeah, gyms, theaters, shit. indoor dining. Oh, about yeah, time. About time. But I mean, the, going back to what you're saying, the the way our show or or TikTok is set up is we could really collab with anyone. So it's like we'd be we're we're itching to collab with yes. anyone. You know, it's like there's yeah. no like specific person. It's like uh, just everyone. You know, because yeah. like everyone could have. It, it, it's a win-win for both people and at the end of the day it's a blast doing the experience yeah. it's you know? just like would we want to collab with this person and they someone we would be like oh that's a cool collab you know like yeah that's our only real criteria i think it's also, yeah i mean i think it's also cool that like uh your brand doesn't like revolve around collabs though because like you guys you yes. guys have each other so it's like you don't need anybody else exactly but i mean if right. you have milk in a video or something that's dope but it's not no 100 percent exactly no. yeah it's, yeah and that's why another like the collabs can help but then like you said you don't want to be relying on them you know mm-hmm. you want to build a brand around yourselves right I, yeah i feel like your type of content like who doesn't want to do a science experiment and like test no that, exactly you know? and a good amount of people follow us that are sort of like sort of big names like Shay Mitchell and, and um, Howie, what's his last name? Mandel. And then I thought it was, I just didn't want to butcher it, Howie, if you ever listened to this. <laughs> uh, you know, so there's some cool people, Phineas and Ferb creator, uh, Bryce Hall, LeBron's son. Um, yeah. Bryce Hall, that it kind of reminds me of, uh, the what has he got going? The Party Animal University. Would you guys ever consider yeah. doing something like that? Yeah, I mean... What is that? He's got like this PAU club, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so he's like got this whole brand around being like a party animal. So they just released like, I mean, he's got this energy drink with Josh Richards. Uh-huh. He's got this like members only PAU club, which is like a Patreon type thing. You know, you pay yeah. 20 bucks a month, you get exclusive content. And, you know, he's got some jewelry, right? He's got some clothes. So he's seeing, I don't know, like he's really trying to play up this party animal thing. And I don't think we're, we, we're saying that like party sure it's not like a uh, omschmack, like college party, like, you know, like Krill was here type thing. Yeah. It's just like a vibe, you know, uh-huh. no. I don't know. it's different than, it's different than a party animal. We're not saying we're party animals, you know, we like, no, sometimes we, like, we, can, <laughs> we can party. That's yeah, just, no, yeah. we, can party, but we can also shirt when we need. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. No, that makes sense though. Like, I don't know. It's it's definitely a different thing, and you your your video doesn't like reflect yeah. that you guys are like no. very tall, I guess. <laughs> right. And the thing that's interesting with that is like, he's got this party animal brand, but it's like Bryce Hall, and I could be wrong. You know, I haven't seen his demos, but like, you know, Nelk's that party brand, right? Like, their mm-hmm. their audience is like eighteen to twenty two year old frat boys and people outside of that. But like, you know, so it makes sense them like having this party brand but like Bryce Hall it's just like I would if I had to guess I would assume it's like girls that are around like 14 to 16 that are his main fan base so I don't know if they're like 
dying for party content, you know? Yeah. I, I feel like he's just slowly transitioning to, like, a boy's demographic, though. Yeah, yeah probably with the YouTube. I think, you know, he's really killing on the YouTube, and so mm-hmm. that's probably getting him... Um, it's all power to him, you know? He's trying to expand his hori- horizons. Yeah, yeah. Heard he's got a sick house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, what's your craziest experience in L.A.? I'm pretty sure you guys been here for a while, right? There's been some... Cool. I mean, it's, it's all relative, you know, like every day we're still amazed. But when I first moved here, you know, like I didn't know I was 18, you know, like still wet behind the ears. But through him, we started going through these like L.A. parties. And there was this one house called Pink Tank. It was like some app that raised a couple million and they would just throw the sickest party. So like I'm 18 and at these parties, like YG went there the day after he got shot. Like he's on crutches, like, you know, hobbling around like. <laughs> Mike, Mike Will made it DJ like Tiger like and these are like an intimate party of like 50 those people those are like real parties yeah. those aren't even like just like no. I feel like that's more than what the no, parties are exactly, going on right now, exactly you know? like, no one's getting Will I am the fucking no, DJ party no nowadays. and fucking Tiger and um, OT Genesis right when Coco no. blew the fuck up you know like <laughs> oh it was mayhem like Kylie Jenner was there like <laughs> wow. so that was just super cool because I was like oh shit this is like LA LA you know and then <laughs> And then they lost money and then I went to, you know, that company like ended and that house ended and then it was back to like Valley parties. And then I went to SC and now it's finally starting back up. I'm sure I've already doing crazy. Yeah. I don't know. Fucking hell. I mean, we've kind of, <laughs> the past month, we've really kind of been starting to like get around in terms of like the influencer world. Mm. And so we've been meeting a ton of people and just, it's. Feel crazy, you know. Yeah. Last night we we're hanging with Young Gravy. He was super nice. I called Max to see if you boys wanted to come, but um, Max was asleep. I, I was about to ask what uh, what's like the craziest collab <laughs> or like what who have you met that's like the craziest, most famous person? Dude, I mean, like like recently or just like, like just in LA in general or whatever. I mean, in the past, who have we met? Like, cool. Harry Jess, he's become another yeah. friend of ours, and he's a really – that's yeah, because Ivy's got his own story about that and how he, like – you know. Oh, my God. So, fucking – it's summertime, quarantine. I'm, like, obsessed with Netflix, staying up super late every night, and I'm watching Too Hot to Handle. And I'm, I get, I'm a sucker for reality TV sometimes, you know? <laughs> and so I'm watching this show, and I'm watching Harry Jousey. And X just had his boys the previous year come out from Australia, and they stayed with us for two weeks. I'm like, X, this guy, Harry Jousey, reminds me exactly of your buddy Zane. And he's like, really, really? He's like, oh, I got to check him out. A month later, X is going out to out to lunch with Harry and our boy Luca. I was just like, "Wow, this is crazy!" Like, you know, it was. And oh, then, and now he's yeah. Friend. I thought he would have been there, but you know. And the thing is, with Harry, which is and Devin, you met. Well, you, no, you you went there. Um, yeah, I was. <laughs> <laughs> but he's just such a fucking nice guy and like genuine. Like, yeah. but we met him before we'd truly blown up. You know, we had a song that had sort of done well on TikTok. It done pretty well, you know, but like relative to everything now. Um, but, you know, it was doing doing decent, but, you know, nothing crazy, you know, it's like no one was recognizing us or like anything. And we met him and he was just such a good guy connecting us to people whenever we asked, like, would not hesitate like to do anything for you, you know? And I was just like, dude, this guy doesn't know me. He's like a big shot and he's like helping out me, you know? And I was like, he was, it was helpful with that expectation. You know, he's not like, all right, like I'll do this. Can you do this? Like, no, he was just kept helping, helping, helping. So I think that was really cool. Just like seeing that. No, yeah. Maybe I, another Aussie's cool too. No, I feel like a lot of people think of these like big influencers, like this, some type of God, but, like deep down, they're just like human, just like everyone else. It is like, human, but, and they, you know, the thing that's, I guess, impressive is that they're not assholes, you know, which is sad that it's like, that we just expect, you know, all these influencers to be sort of pricks, but um, no, he was such a nice guy. And, you know, for the most part, like you said, like a lot of these influencers are just normal people. When you get to know them, they're very chill. Some you meet and they're just, you know, the divas you expect, but yeah, hundred percent. Well, I think this is a good time to wrap it up. But like, one last question: We usually like to like ask you guys if there's like an aspiring influencer watching this. What's like the one piece of advice you'd give them? Like, if you had to tell them anything, like, yeah. just go for it. Like, what do you guys think? Yeah, 
just go for it, you know, learn the algorithm and shit. Like you can't just like post whatever, you know, yeah. like you got to be smart about it. You got to treat it like a business and you got to like educate yourself and, and put in the work and, and build the right team. And yeah, you know, and then you probably still won't make it. So good luck. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of the day though, once you stop, that's when you truly like, yeah, that's when you fail, you know, right, so. like just, just keep doing it. No, treat it like a business. I like it. It'll that. work out. Exactly. Yeah. Sweet. Well, we appreciate you guys coming on. This was super interesting. Thanks for having yeah, us, Milkman. <laughs> Where can people find you, like, on your socials and stuff? Just... We're pretty much at Party Shirt on everything. Um, yeah, that's pretty much. I think we got at Party Shirt on everything. i got to get the Twitter yeah. sorted. But, yeah, everything else at Party Shirt. Sweet. Check us out. Sweet. The personals if you want. Yeah. In the Party Shirt. Yeah, go to the Instagram bio. Just a one tap to the personals. Check them out. You might find something you like. Exactly. <laughs> you'll see you'll see the dairy man himself. Yeah, Devin features <laughs> on both of our personal Instagram. So if you're looking for more Devin content, look no further. Hundred percent.